Well, good morning, everybody, and happy World Children's Day. Uh, my name is Kelly, and I'm one of the Youth Library Associates here at the Glen Ellen Public Library. And um, before we begin our program today, I just want to offer a brief land acknowledgement. Um, this is something the library has been working on for the past year, and it'll soon be posted in full on our website. So here it is. The Glen Ellen Public Library is grateful for its place in the village of Glen Ellen and the land we are able to inhabit. We acknowledge the peoples who were here before, including the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi, as well as others. We recognize that they are still here today and continue to be stewards of the rivers, wildlife, and plants which flourish under their care. And here at the Glen Ellen Public Library, we are committed to offering programming in partnership with Indigenous cultures. And we are delighted to learn along with you today as our guest, Mark Denning presents, Children as Water Protectors, How Native Americans and Youth Will Help Strengthen Our Environmental Communities. Well, good morning, Mark. Good morning, everybody. And it's so nice to see one face that I see. And um, I see we have three others that are with us. So that's really awesome. Um, it is World Children's Day. And it's a, this means it's your day. I don't know if that means you get some sort of celebration at home, or maybe this is it. But we have a very important subject in front of us today. And maybe uh, just kind of with a, a, a look or, or some kind of way of letting me know however you do that with a hand raise or if you can, I can see your faces, you, I can kind of see where you're coming from. So let's see. First, we're going to talk about water. And water is just so very important to all of us, right? The majority of our bodies are made up of water. Today, maybe when you woke up, maybe you brushed your teeth, right? And you didn't do that with Kool-Aid or soda, right? You did it with water. Uh, and then as you go and exercise or when you're in line at school, right? You line up and you go to a drinking fountain perhaps, or maybe have your own water bottle because we need to be drinking that good water every day. And we don't often think about where it comes from. How did it get here? What is its purpose, right? And, and where is it going? Because water is always moving, always present in our lives. And it's something we don't often talk about. So in today's session, I was going to bring forward a book uh, about my aunt, right? It's kind of through her very kindness and generosity by calling me a nephew. And, uh, and her name is Josephine Mendamin. And Josephine Mandam is, is one of the people that had occupied the area of Glen Ellen Library. So when you hear those names of tribal people, she is, a, she is one of those people. She's passed on now and originally from uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario, but she would do water walks all over the country. And by water walks, I mean this. How do you bring attention to something when you think attention needs to be had. And by that, I mean, let's say I have this bear, right? And I wanna bring attention to this bear who's kind of walking across my screen and maybe you see it and maybe you don't because you're not paying attention. What I do is I'll wave my hand, I'll bring attention to it and, and I'll bring movement to him as he walks this way and as he's walking the other way, and that brings attention. If I just leave them here, like the things behind me, they kind of just blend in. So our great uh, aunt, grandmother Josephine Mendamin, had this idea. And it was many years ago before most of you were born that are on this call right now. And I mean that literally, perhaps except for me. Uh, we are a part of what's called the Three Fires Medewin Lodge. That three fires is made up again of the tribes that we just talked about, Ojibwe, Potawatomi, and Odawa people in a great alliance, much like the United States is made of states 
that alliance is made up of different folks. So that is where she is from. That is where I am from. That is where we met is in that great medicine lodge of Native American people meeting in faith and worship and recognizing our culture. And it was in that lodge that one of our elders approached us and said, who will stand up for the water? Who amongst you will protect the water to make sure that it's safe to drink? Because if water isn't safe to drink, it can harm people. And living in Milwaukee, where I am from, that is an interesting thing because there was a moment years ago, 1993, when the water that was coming and supplying our water was making us sick with a disease or a virus or a whatever you might call it. It's uh, actually a, a living being that's in the water called cryptosporidium. No one knows, knew what was making an entire city sick. And so when they're searching for the answers, what is making us sick? The officials and doctors and researchers found out it was a very water we drink. Imagine brushing your teeth with water that will harm you. Imagine your you drinking water that will harm you. And people saying, oh, drink more water, it will make you better. And it in fact is making you more sick. It's stories like that and other stories that created that question, what are we doing for the water? And that's why we're here today. You as young people can do something about water. Now, what I was gonna do for you, because our time is short together, it was kind of read you a book, but I can't, I, I want to leave that to you to do that on your own and, and check this book out because this book that we're talking about, probably at your library or your library will be getting it. Oh, look, there it is. Um, awesome. So that book is amazing. And what's really awesome here is I think let's dive into it just a little bit. I don't want to remove kind of open it up and just read a few pages out of that book. And then we're going to go to some really important work that you can do as young people for the water. So now you know who she is, an older woman who was asked, what can you do for the water? And now you know why she was working for the water. And now you're gonna find out how she worked for the water and how you can do it in your community. So I, I like this partnership that we have. <laughs> so just a, a few pages, we'll see where we're at because there's so much for me to say and share with you. So Kelly, uh, please, um, with your best reading voice that everybody loves as you work with young people, let's hear this really awesome story. Thank you. All right, so we'll start from the beginning and then you could just let me know when you want me to move ahead. Um, this is called The Water Walker. I don't know if you could see it. Um, we will start, this was written and illustrated by Joanne Robertson. And I apologize if I'm not pronouncing the names correctly, so bear with me. You know, no, we're, gonna, we're gonna do this together. Awesome. And this is gonna be good teamwork for, for our young guests. So, okay, go ahead, sorry. Nokomis loved Nibi, and Nibi loved Nokomis. So Nokomis for everybody, as you look at that page and she holds it closer to it, this is good partnership and teamwork you're seeing. Nokomis is that great, beautiful moon that is high above us. She watches all that we do. And Nimi, below, you can see that beautiful blue shimmering water with the white on it. That is Nimi, that is our water. So that grandmother is a grandmother to all of us and watches over us in our belief, our Medewan belief, that means the way of the heart. And imagine what that water looks like when the moon in its fullness that we just had shine so brightly on the water. Our answers say, our ancestors say, that what is above is below. And you can see that in the reflections of the water. When you look in the water, you can see a reflection of you. What a beautiful page this is. Okay, and that's Grandma Josephine right there. Okay, next page, awesome. 
rain or shine. So you can see that water is with us during rain. That's easy for us to see. And even when the sun is out and the clouds are going about, those clouds are made of water. When the clouds are made of water vapor. And it also can be ice, that ice that's coming out when the sun shines brightly on the snow. You're gonna see water in front of you that's then a solid form, right? So this is that acknowledgement that water is all around us. Next page. So awesome. Hot or cold. You could see the little snowflake on her tongue. Calm or wild. There's a big storm. So we've all been there, right? Maybe the moms and dads that are listening, you've been caught out in a rainstorm at the worst possible moment, right? But then when you get caught up in the storm, there's that other moment when you feel refreshed and upheld by this great world and say, ah, you know, too bad about these really awesome clothes, but uh, that felt great. When was the last time we were outside in the rain, right? Just standing there enjoying it, just like being in the beautiful snow. That's what we're trying to say. That's why that heart is there. We love water in all its forms. Next page. Every morning, like the women in her family before her, Nokomis hopped out of bed and before doing anything else, she sang. Gichi Migawech, Nibi, for the life you give to every living thing on earth, I love you. I respect you. But one day, a wise Ojima told her, in my lifetime, the day will come when an ounce of water costs more than an ounce of gold. What are you going to do about it? That's awesome. Our Ogama is our late grand chief, Edward Benton Benet, one of the founders of the American Indian movements for parents out there to look that up. And this is her listening to our grand chief and thinking of what the challenge is. Who will stand up for the water? Who will stand up for the water? Will you? Will I? That's the question. Great question. Next. Think of it, the water has no voice, right? Who will speak for the water? Okay. Like an arrow, his words pierced Nokomis's heart. She looked around. She saw how people were disrespecting the water, wasting it, making it unfit for life. Think of all that life that lives in the water. This one right here, you can see. Here he is, swimming across your screen. That turtle of different types and colors and shapes and sizes. And this very special one, the otter, the gig one of our most beautiful and powerful beings in our creation. Awesome. Next page. Who will speak for them? They turned to night and nights turned to weeks. And Nokomis remembered the Ogama's words. A few moons went by and then one night Nokomis had a bawajan. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> Early next morning, Nokomis called her sister and Kiwak Nichis over for tea to talk about their responsibility to protect Nipi. Okay, awesome. We're seeing people, they're in communication. She's thinking, right? That's where the best things come from. It's about awareness. That is the very first step of anything. In our great lodge in faith, the very first song of our 64 songs is the song of awareness. And that's what's happening with her right now. Just like you, as you sit there now, it's awareness. I've never thought of that. I never thought that water could harm me. I never thought that if no one speaks for the water, can bad things can happen or good things. What will happen? Next page. Four days later, Nokomis and the Mother Earth water walkers, as they came to be known, found themselves standing on the side of the road, wearing sneakers. 
Nokomis carried a copper pail full of nebi in one hand and a Megizi staff in the other. If no one noticed nebi, maybe they would notice the water walkers. Maybe someone would ask why they carried nebi in their copper pail. Maybe someone would be moved to protect nebi too. In our great lodges, you look at that beautiful picture and we'll hold it up there for just a moment. Look at all of this. Our women are charged with the responsibility of caring with the water. That's why there's so many beautiful depictions of women in this. And you see an eagle staff, much like this one, as you look at your screen and where I am and I'm putting some movement to it. This is one of those staffs that gets carried around the water and these eagle feathers are of a very special eagle. This eagle, the one above, is so awesome in the blue sky with his white tail and white head and, and his brownish black body sparkling in the sun watching over us, right? The, we carry those feathers. This eagle is th that eagle of water, that eagle of water. And off they went carrying copper, a copper pail, because that copper is in our story that you're not seeing here. Water was came to our earth with that copper. And that is how life was helped on this earth with also that element of copper. Next page, what a great page. Nokomis and the Mother Earth Water Walkers walked around all the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River. They walked every spring for seven years. They seven. prayed, seven years, that's a long time. Yeah. They prayed and sang to Nebi. They left Sama in every lake, river, stream, and puddle they met. They got up before the birds and went to bed when Nokomis Gizis rose. So that Sama that you've heard about, now our grandmother has walked around that Great Lake system several times in her life. For the adults on the, here, you'll understand that she needed a hip replacement and two knee replacements, I believe, right? And she also walked the length and breadth of the Mississippi River many times. It's an amazing story of resilience, an amazing story of protecting our waterways. So please look at that and understand the great, great expanse of these lakes. And this lady in her 60s going into her 70s walked every step around that waterway. Next page. Well, that's inspiring. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> it is. Nokomis was interviewed on television, in newspapers, and on radio. She was even in movies. But big companies, politicians, and even her next door neighbors still did not feel the urgency to protect Nebi. What more can I do? Wondered Nokomis. So that's really interesting, right? Because so often people go on media and say, oh, I've told my story and that's it. But more has to be done because these people on your screen that you're looking at, this turtle here, this otter here, are depending on us to do even more. What more can be done than just a post online or what more can be done than just kind of talking about it? It's actually doing it. And that water protection means raising awareness and calling people to action. That means we have to believe in it. We have to understand that our life depends on water. Next page. A year later, over by the Atlantic Ocean, Anichi Kwe had a bawajan, which she shared with Nokomis as soon as she woke up. Nokomis Nekoma, shared the bawajan with all the people she had met during her previous walks. Word spread fast across Turtle Island. Everyone began to prepare. Next thing you know, there were quick walks standing at each salt nebi surrounding Turtle Island with a copper pail in one hand and a Megizi staff in the other, wearing sneakers. 
Absolutely. Can you imagine your grandma in sneakers walking all those ways? And what we're talking about in those really special words that you heard from Kelly is this. They had a vision. They had a vision of women coming together because you know what? Women are our, our moms. And each of you in your birth was announced with water. Each of us who was born in a natural way, our birth is announced with water. And it's just such a special moment when women stand up for the water, have visions of that water, and are moved to protect the water. There is such a deep and abiding connection to it, especially for our young girls and young moms out there that are listening to this story. That vision extends now to each and every one of you because we're talking about it today, you're learning about it today, and hopefully move to do something about it today. Next page. In the West, Nokomis and the Mother Earth Water Walkers set off from the Pacific Ocean saying, Nagasichinge Nibi Onji, I will do it for the water. One year after a devastating oil spill, Nokomis and the Water Walkers set off from the Gulf of Mexico, singing to Nibi and praying for healing for Nibi. Water, we love you, we thank you, we respect you. It's a beautiful song, and when sung in our language, it's amazing. Moms and dads, you can find that water song online. You can just go to your grandfather or grandma Google search and put in Josephine Mendamin water song or just water song uh, and kind of water walkers. And you will see amazing videos of people throughout the world singing of their love of water. Next page. I'm so excited. I want to know what happens at the end. I don't want it to stop here. I was going to do something. This is awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Next. Okay. Next, Nokomis and the water walkers set off from the Atlantic Ocean in the east. At the send off, they walked barefoot on the rocks and the beautiful petroglyphs and sang to Nibi. Putting on their sneakers, they started out on the migration trail their ancestors traveled hundreds of years before. In the frigid north, the ice was five feet thick. Nokomis and the Mother Earth water walkers put Sema on the frozen Nibi, singing their thanks, respect, and love. I think that's self-explanatory and so beautifully read. There, there isn't anything I could add to that except to say this. We're talking about a very sacred plant to all of us. And that is the plant that they put on the earth to acknowledge our love and respect for both the earth and our water. And we do that all the time. And in that image, you'll see her carrying that eagle staff in that copper vessel. In that copper pot or vessel, there is water. And that water comes from the very origin point where the walk begins. So you heard a story where she walked from coast to coast with water from the from one ocean to the other ocean. Please understand what you're seeing here is an amazing story that is an envision by our women. Next page. Oh my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> you gotta put your face really close to the screen to, to see all of what's going on in that picture. But all of the places, all of the faces, all of the races, all of the cities, all of the country, all of the rivers and all of the waters that she was a part of. It's an, it is truly, truly a life that has, was lived, dedicated to each and every person on this earth. These water walks spread throughout the world and continue today. Wow, what an awesome image. Next page. I hope moms and dads, you have a chance to check this book out and really visit with these images. They're just really, really approachable. Yeah. Okay, let's finish our book and see where we're at. Maybe we have time for questions, so all right. Saltwater tears filled the Mother Earth, water walkers' eyes as the four salt Nibi met Lake Superior. One day, the four salt Nibi will be reborn as clouds and be carried home on the wind, said Nokomis. 
as as you look at those, just imagine how far she walked to put salt water into the fresh water of Lake Superior. All that emotion, all of that work welling up in one moment of in the waters of salt and fresh joining together in a moment of song and celebration. It was an emotional moment. It was an awesome moment. It was a beautiful moment. And in this book, you can be there and you can imagine it. Next one. Nokomis went through three knees, 11 pairs of sneakers walking for Nevi. She got her knees replaced and is at home resting up, taking the time to surf online for new sneakers. <laughs> she had to do that almost every walk because she would wear them out. And please remember her steps were kind of when I would watch her walk, we have long youthful strides. For her as an older person, she kind of walked from side to side and her stride from one foot to the other was maybe six or eight inches six or eight inches at a time, that great expanse. And when she got home, she would rest and her phone would ring and someone would say, hey, someone's polluting our water. We want to bring attention to the water. Our elected officials aren't paying attention to us. They're not listening to us. They're getting, what can you do? Please come and help us. And off she would go from that chair and her couch and, and never asking for any money, anything. She would just say, let's bring attention to what's going on. Next page. Every morning she puts down her sema for Nibi and sings her gratitude. She prays people wake up and realize that without Nibi, there is no life. And she continues to wonder, what are you going to do about it? As just hold that picture right there and let me ask the question of all the moms and dads that are listening and brothers and sisters and you as young people looking at this picture. What can you do for the water? What is it that we can do ourselves, no matter our age? We can't, certainly if we can't drive or get one place to another, but we can do something. All right, I think there might be one other page left. Oh, well, these are the pronunciations. Okay, yeah. That's what we'll look at next time. All the words and pronunciations and surprise, but Kelly, you did such an awesome job and, and we can put the book down. And please check this book out. And so great that the library has that available to you. And I want to thank the library for, for bringing me in. But before we go and our, our visit today, I just, it is a good question, right? And the adults can weigh in, Kelly, you too. It's like, what is it that a person in Glen Allen, in Glen Allen, sorry, can do to help the water? I know one idea. One idea here in Milwaukee was just so awesome. What I saw was a group of people who loved canoeing and they would always go up north. You know? And they would drive for hours and hours to be along trees and waterways. Then the question occurred to them, why can't we canoe in Milwaukee? And they started a canoe club right in the middle of the city. Trees started to be replanted. Um, and now 30 years later, Milwaukee River went from having three species of fish to having 88 species of fish. And because of these efforts of these first canoers and the messaging spread, we had Sturgeon, my clan, this is my clan, Sturgeon clan, a water clan. These great fish returned to the Milwaukee River after 180 years. Wow. If Milwaukee can do it, you can do it, but there's other things that can be done. So let, let's explore some ideas. Moms and dads, you can unmute, uh, maybe explore some, what can be done for the water in your community? What do you think? Um, I, I actually teach at a high school and we work with the Shedd Aquarium. Um, so that was one of the reasons I was actually really interested in coming to this, this Zoom, because I wanted some ideas to work with. I, I, work with young men um, in the city of Chicago alongside the Shedd Aquarium. And um, I just wanted a new perspective and something that I could bring to them um, because we're actually looking at fresh water right now and their final project for the semester is a public service announcement um, to take away dams. So, so 
one of the things that, that has been done, and that is a major project along the Milwaukee River. I would contact the Milwaukee River Keepers because dams have been taken out. High school students can in, get involved in water testing. They can get involved in water preservation activities, like um, when people may have a band or a festival on the water. Uh, and high school folks can also do their own water walks to say, we're gonna bring attention to what's happening. But the very first thing I think high school folks need to know is one, the importance of water to them, their bodies, their health, their safety of their moms and dads and themselves. To talk to athletes, what is best for an athlete during an athletic contest? Is it, right? Is it the yep. bottled stuff or is it water? And one question to ask young people is take them to a body and ask them this one question, who owns this water? Who owns this water and really explore those questions and then begin to ask and do reports about, okay, who owns the water, who sells the water and to whom and why and who benefits and who doesn't. Those are great places for high schoolers to start. Sorry for the interruption, but it's just thank you for that work and thank you for being here with us. I, I appreciate it. And we can follow up with other questions. Any other moms and dads out there with ideas? What can we do to help the water in our communities? I've noticed that some people are starting to go for more of a a zero scape in their landscape because grasses and things like that are a more native um, type of um, plants and things because trying to grow this perfect green grass in an area where it doesn't belong takes a lot of water that could be better either preserved or used. So I think that's something that here in Glen Ellen we could definitely do. And not using so many chemicals so that the runoff into the water that we do have stays um, cleaner. It's exactly right. And even cisterns being used in and around houses for runoff, um, that, that the soil can help filter that. And again, high schoolers can get involved in this kind of thing with a question and with some experimenting, like how can we use, uh, instead of water diversion, water inclusion, right? So when we have not producing the most massive agricultural product uh, in this United States, which is our lawns and the use of water, we can use it more responsibly. So that's exactly on point. And even when we do that, imagine what happens in a city like Denver where cister cisterns are used, water comes in short supply and cisterns are made illegal by the city. So you can't use the water that falls on your property to feed your plants for the purposes that you want that water to go to work for you. It's an amazing time and historical point in the world we live in. How interesting, and, and it's in at all levels, governance, personal, agricultural. Any other parents out there with some ideas? Any young people? Maybe even just use in the home, as far as your what you're using within, within your home as um, dishes and shower and all of that. Uh, water conservation practices, right? Turning the water off or, um, maybe sometimes it's incredible, but the dishwasher will lose, use less water than we do when we're washing dishes for the normal family of four or when we do a dish load. So yeah, knowing that kind of thing is really helpful um, because there's only so much water in the world. And as we're watching climate change, people will be moving into our areas and there will be additional demands on our water. Uh, and for the young people that are out there wondering, boy, I'm just six, I'm just five, what can I do? Moms and dads, and you can start a water cleanup. There is a waterway in your community, right? Yeah. Uh, I've seen it been there and there's water cleanups. You just look it up, Google water, the community, go to your librarian at the ready reference table. They're amazing. And look for activities around water and you will find something to go and support. And if there isn't something you can start conversations about what can we do for the water? Maybe even have a water walk around the water that you have, whatever the length and breadth that you determine and have fun doing something to help our water. 
Well, interesting enough, Mark, um, in the spring, we're offering a program. Um, it'll go up live, I believe, December 4th, but on March 19th, um, we have the link um, in the chat if you're interested. Um, we have an opportunity where young people, families can help clean the waterways that run through Ackerman Park. Um, it's going to be an event, so take a look at that information. That would definitely be one way to help um, protect our natural resource, our, our water. I think that's a really great activity because when we're riding in cars or with our brothers and sisters and they'll throw something out the window, it's often forgotten. Mm -hmm. But when we take on the work of cleaning up other people's stuff, you begin to understand the work of your mom. <laughs> you begin to work, understand the work of your dad when they say, clean your room, get that stuff off the couch. There's too many things on the floor, clean it up. If you put in that two, three hours of cleaning other people's stuff up, you'll get it. And I think that's an awesome activity. And thank you for putting that link online. Much appreciated. Um, maybe just a few other ideas before we go. I, I don't want to overtax people. I know we are only here for half an hour, but this is a, an essential, an essential topic for our communities. And thank you to the library for highlighting it. So anyone else would like to weigh in? Oh, I see a comment about somebody using those red barrels for readily identifiable on their property and been using them for years. This is that moment to become politically active and aware because many cities are moving to control those barrels. And in fact, saying themselves, we own that water, you do not. What an interesting conversation. Anyone else? Okay, I think we had a really great session. I know and I, I need to send my great apologies out to the library. I've, it's been very difficult to get in touch with me and connect with me and they chase me down through the Trickster Gallery or Native American partner in the community. Please visit them. They have such a beautiful building dedicated to our veterans, all of our veterans, but especially Native veterans and they're terrific community partners. And the library, please use your library. Librarians can be our best friends and our best community advocates. You can walk in the library when they're open, use a computer, get a movie, take out a book. No one asks you for anything but a library card and they're more than happy to help you. Then if there's a question that occurs in a book with all of the big words of a language you don't know or whatever, they are there. And it's like this magical place. Because believe me, when you go to school, you run into a teacher, they'll only help you so much. And then they'll give you a test and they'll say, okay, you tell me. But at the library, they stand ready to help you learn just about anything you can imagine and direct you into really awesome places. And I also want to say, uh, <laughs> what a great reading voice. I can tell you're a, a reading veteran. And I'm so glad I left my book in the other room because I was all ready to go with my, my animal friends with another <laughs> story because there's other things. But how boring to watch some dude read a book. But Kelly, you made it alive, and I, I bow to you in great humility, and what an awesome reading voice, and way you brought that story to life, man. Well, Super duper impressed, and, and thank you for doing that for us, and, and well, to all of, yeah. Inspiring story. So remember, the Water Walker, we have this here at the library. Um, it, it's amazing, um, and thank you so much, Mark, for spending your time with us, bringing awareness to um, how precious water is to all of us and the things that we could do to, to help um, in our community, so. Okay, from all of us and all my friends here in the Trickster Gallery and the Glen Ellen Library, we are off to our beautiful, powerful and amazing day. Please drink water and visit water today and be inspired. Thank you all for your time and hope to see you again one day. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good weekend.